Hello everyone and welcome to the quote analysis video guidelines. Uh, this paper is worth 15% of your grade and it is a thousand words or it should be a thousand uh, words minimum. And just to clarify you have the option of writing the quote analysis or the close analysis and you can check out the close analysis video guidelines as well uh, to compare and contrast. So this paper like uh, the close analysis is going to be uh, do in two parts. The first part is the selection and so here you're going to be identifying a quote that you would like to write about in the actual paper and this will be due to this should be posted to the discussion board labeled close analysis quote analysis selection um, in the appropriate folder. Please check the guidelines for which folder that is and the quote analysis paper so this is the actual paper you'll be writing based upon the quote that you choose uh, which should be drop which should be posted to the close analysis quote analysis Dropbox. All right. So in this paper, um, students are going to identify a passage from a text, any text, read right up through Module 10, um, and explore that passage in terms of what it means, how it relates to the text it is from, and why it is an important passage in American literature. Here, the purpose is to illustrate. Uh, the student's ability to examine a text, identify meaning, full and important pieces of it, and be capable of articulating how that piece represents the source it comes from and American literature. Uh, so the ultimate goal is to grapple with the course material, prove competency in reading and analyzing while also tying it to the course at large. Uh, so that sounds like a lot. It's not really, particularly by the time that we're writing this, you'll have been exposed to a lot of different works within American literature. You'll have had a lot of experience doing this kind of quote analysis. What we're at, what this paper asks of you is to go a bit further and to spend a bit longer with one particular quote, uh, long enough to write this paper and to connect it to other things within American literature. Alright, so there are three major parts to this assignment. The first is to find a good quote, the second is to brainstorm the quote, and the third is to write about the quote. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, so let's break that down even further. So find a good quote. Here are some things students will want to do or to consider. Uh, students should be actively looking for powerful writing, uh, looking for powerful writings as they are reading course material. That is, again, I encourage you to be an active reader, to always be annotating in, you know, writing in margins, taking notes on anything that you're reading, and to do that means you, there's a better chance of you finding a quote more quickly than it might take you otherwise. Uh, if you're actively identifying passages that you find are important, that are powerful, that just resonate with you, uh, that makes that makes this project much easier to deal with once you get later into the semester. You can look at all of your work and really kind of skim through to get to find those those different places that you've highlighted. But this is part of what it means to be an active reader is to be identifying the the important stuff. Students must use a reading anywhere within the f within modules three to ten. So you should be looking at anything that we've read or that you've read between module three and module ten. Um, there's some stipulations there that we'll talk about later, but uh, largely looking for anything between modules three and ten. Find a quote that resonates with you, appreciate its worth, be comfortable writing about it. Uh, you don't even necessarily have to like the quote. You can have a lot of problems with the quote, uh, but still be able to, in, in that having problems with it is, is a kind of resonating. Uh, it's you're able to speak to the quote, you're able to engage in the quote and talk about it. Uh, just be aware or just really think about um, as you're looking at different quotes don't just go with something that you think is important or I'm sorry don't just go with something that you think um, sounds good or that you think will appease me or that you feel is easy or, or something like that really think about you know something that you feel you can you can say a lot about because you're going to be spending some time with this quote Students should not be locating quotes on websites and other sources. Again, this often sets students up for failure. It often sets up students to accidentally or purposely plagiarize. You really want to find the quote on your own. Uh, it just it makes it for an easier process because you've selected it, you feel comfortable with it, you know where it sits within the text. Uh, I can't I can't emphasize that enough that that's really an important piece of this is that you choose it, um, that it's your quote to explore. And students cannot use the primary text they use for uh, the article analysis. So again, you can't double dip. 
uh, if the major text that your article analysis focused on was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, then you can't use common sense as the primary place to take a quote from. Uh, the goal here, you know, the purpose is for you to find different texts for these assignments. It's not, you shouldn't be using the same one time and again. So please just keep that in mind that I am I will be looking at that and raising questions about that um, if you use the same text because that is not acceptable. All right, so brainstorming the quote. Uh, you want to jot down the ways the quote connects to the text that it's taken from, right? So you really do want to sit down once you have that quote, really just rip it apart and analyze it in a lot of different ways and try to connect it um, in different ways. You, you want to write a lot of thoughts before you sit down to write the paper. So jot down the ways the quote connects to the text it's taken from. Break down the literal and metaphorical meanings of the quote. So again, you want to think about you know what's the actual what's the straightforward meaning but then also does this does the ideas behind the quote connect to something bigger what's is this is there metaphor at work is there analogy at work what is that and how do you connect it or how do you make sense of it consider if the text contains any uh, if the quote contains any thematic symbolic or significant elements that you can connect to other readings and we'll talk about why that's important later on um, so this is really what you want to want to be working with and, and jotting down and connecting with um, so that you're ready when you sit down to write to pull out all of all of the stops and really give this quote your full attention and and uh, understanding. So now writing about the text, writing about the quote. Uh, these are the things you want to cover. You want to explain the chosen passage. Uh, in, in, in this, you want to be discussing what it means, how it relates to the text that it's taken from, and those are the bigger meaning that can be understood from it. So you should be spending a good chunk of time here really kind of giving everything you can about this quote, why it's important, how it's important, you know, what's its use, why, why are we talking about this quote. Here's the challenging part for students. Uh, here's where you have to, given your discussion, given what you do in point one, you have to meaningfully connect the passage to at least two other pieces. Um, that is, explore how the passage meaning, how the passage's meaning relates to, sheds light upon, or gives newer meaning to other pieces read in the course. <clears throat> So again, we can think about this as if you're looking at a passage from Benjamin Franklin's autobiography, then you might try to look at your interpretation of the quote and say, okay, given this quote, given Franklin's ideas here, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, when we look at, say, Nathaniel Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown, we have a very different view about Young Goodman Brown if we apply this quote. It renders Young Goodman Brown different in our eyes, or it, young, you know, it renders the narrator of Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat very differently if we think about this quote. Um, so you want to do that with at least two pieces. This is the hard part. This is the hard part of this assignment drawing those parallels, making that connection, taking the explanation and interpretation that you've offered your reader and then saying, now, if you look at what I've said and you apply it to this reading or that reading, you come out with this new meaning. It is the hard part, but that's what the assignment's there for. And the final part is to discuss how the passage is relevant in the larger context of American literature. You should keep in mind this this really should be part of your conclusion. Um, it shouldn't be as largely discussed as the first two points. So you could almost think about it as, you know, part one and part two are a good 40% of your paper, and part three is really the last 20%. Um, I might even say, you know, you could even say further in, in part one and part two are, are 45%, and the last part is 10%, but um, 10 to 20% is, is really that, that last point. So keep that in mind, is you don't want to get too lost in that larger context, but you really want to be focusing on the quote, what it means, how it connects to other things that we've read. So some questions to consider to help you kind of pull out this, the, your thoughts around a quote. Um, here's what you want to be thinking about, or here are some questions that can help you brainstorm uh, the quote to get more out of it. 
What is the passage passage's context? That is, where does it fit into the writing that it comes from? What does the passage mean in the immediate sense of the writing? That is, what is its literal meaning? Of, what is the literal meaning of the passage? What's going on within that writing that this passage is relevant? What bigger meaning can be deduced from this passage? Um, is metaphor at play, right? What is the metaphorical meanings of the passage? Is there something bigger going on that you can see or connect to? How does this passage represent the work it is taken from? What major ideas, themes, and concepts does this passage capture from the text? So here again, you want to be able to say, this is why this quote represents this larger piece because it captures whatever is that larger piece, piece's theme or purpose. So you're really trying to find this micro, you're trying to find this representation of the whole, right? You, you're trying to capture, if this were a movie, you're trying to capture that one scene that captures the whole movie. And so you want to think about that and you want to think how that can come out, um, how you can find that particular quote to do that. How does the passage relate to the text as a whole? How does the passage relate to the author and what is known about the author? So again, what is it? What does this passage have to say about the whole text? And that's moving beyond just what's within it and connecting it to the author and what we know and understand about the author. So, you know, a good example would be looking at a quote from On the Equality of Sexes by Judith M Sargent Murray and saying, okay, how does, you know, this particular quote connect with this author? Um, well, the, the work is about the equality of the sexes and Judith Sargent Murray is um, of the group that is considered the lesser sex, so maybe there's something that I, that I as the writer can connect there. Why is this quote so powerful or important? Right? What makes it useful and powerful? Why does it resonate with you or why would it resonate with the authors or the readers? Um, and when you, when you ask that, you also want to consider what makes the quote powerful what is being said, which is the content, or how it is being said, which is the style, or both or neither. Often it will be both, but sometimes it's just the style, and sometimes it's just the content, and so you might want to tease that out, or at least play with that, and think about this is what, you know, this is what makes it, it powerful, is its content over its style. Are there other meanings of interpreting the passage? What are they? So, one one thing to always play with yourself is dev devil's advocate and say, okay, I've I've put in all this work in interpretation, but how else could this be read? How might somebody that is not me look at this quote and say, no, 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 what you wrote is junk. Here's what it really means. So be thinking about that or be trying to get outside of your head to see how else you could make sense of the passage. Does this quote relate to other texts that are read in the course and which ones? And again, this is that important question of how do you connect the dots? How do you connect this essay, uh, this writing with any other writing that we've done in the course? How is this passage relevant to other pieces read in this course? Um, so if question nine is, does this relate? And if so, which ones? This question is, how does it relate? How do you connect the dots? In what way does this quote seem to invoke or represent American literature? So is there something powerful about this quote that embodies or represents American literature, uh, given the different themes and ideas that we've talked about with American literature? And then finally, how does it tie into some of the themes and concepts discussed in the class about American literature, particularly that which is crafted and maintained in our written works? So here again, this is going to be along the lines of you know, how can what it, the quote that you use, how does it fit into that American canon, right, that we talk about is, is largely crafted and maintained, that it's not just happenstance that put works into the American canon, but it's purposeful discussion and negotiation. And so does your, theme, does your quote um, tie into some of those themes and concepts? So something to think about with these questions is that you should not 
Your paper should not be a line listing of each of these questions. These are things you should consider, but your essay really needs to be its own essay. You shouldn't just, it shouldn't be clear that you're answering question one and now you're answering question two. These are just ideas, these are things you can brainstorm to help you build that paper. All right, any questions, please let me know, and hopefully this has been useful, and I thank you very much.